Hey, my name is Chameleon, and in this series, I share unpopular opinions of mine on movies, TV shows, and games. So today, I'll be sharing why I believe Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the worst Spider-Man movie, at least since the year 2000. Now, I'm not trying to tell you this as a fact, nor am I trying to change your mind. All I ask is that you hear me out. Naturally, spoilers ahead. The story goes nowhere. Across the Spider-Verse is the worst Spider-Man movie made since 2000. It comes across as a poorly executed attempt to cash in on the popularity of the multiverse concept. The film fails to capture the essence of Spider-Man, who is supposed to be a relatable and heroic figure, not a cartoonish and annoying sidekick. The movie is a mess of fan service, cliches and gimmicks that barely deserves to be called a Spider-Man movie at all. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was a highly anticipated sequel to the Oscar-winning Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, but in my opinion, it fails to live up to the expectations left from the first film. It follows Miles Morales as he travels across different dimensions with Gwen Stacy and meets other versions of Spider-Man, but also faces a new threat that endangers the multiverse. However, the film suffers from a number of flaws that make it a terrible Spider-Man movie. The film is just too long and tried to cram too many characters and subplots into a 140 minute runtime, resulting in a lack of focus and coherence. The film's inflated runtime does not translate into a coherent or engaging story, but rather a dragged out confusing one. The film tries to juggle six different universes, each with its own visual style and tone. It fails to give them enough development or depth, even with its lengthy runtime. The film also introduces a new team of spider people, called the Spider Society, led by Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. But they are mostly underused and overshadowed by the main characters. The film does not explore their backgrounds, motivations, or personalities, making them feel like mere cameos or fan service, which ultimately is exactly what they are, and nothing more. The film also featured a new villain, Spot, who had the ability to create portals across the multiverse and wreak havoc, who again is villainously underused, making him feel generic and forgettable doesn't live up to expectations. The film deviates from the comics and the previous film in many ways, such as changing the origin and powers of some characters, altering the rules and logic of the multiverse, and ignoring the consequences and implications of some events. The film also betrays the core themes and values of Spider-Man, such as responsibility, sacrifice, and heroism. In my opinion, Across the Spider-Verse wastes the potential of its characters and their relationships. Miles Morales, who was the heart and soul of the first film, was reduced to a passive and indecisive protagonist who had little agency or growth. When Stacy, who was supposed to be Miles' love interest and partner, was sidelined and had barely any screen time or chemistry with Miles. It also portrays Miles as a selfish and arrogant teenager who does not care about the impact of his actions on others or on reality itself. He constantly disobeys his mentors, ignores his friends and family, and puts his own desires above everything else. He also shows no remorse or guilt for his mistakes and does not learn any meaningful lessons by the end of the film as you would expect a good hero arc to accomplish. The film is not original or innovative in its storytelling or animation. 
it lacks the charm and creativity of its predecessor. The film relies heavily on cliches, tropes, and references from other films and media, such as Back to the Future, The Matrix, Doctor Strange, and even Rick and Morty. The film does not offer any fresh or surprising twists or turns in its plot, but rather follows a predictable and formulaic structure. The film uses the same comic book inspired style with pop-up panels, captions and sound effects with multiple frames, but this time without any purpose or meaning behind them. The film also overuses slow motion, freeze frames and split screens to create artificial tension or drama. The film also failed to capture the humour and emotion of the first film, relying on cheap jokes and forced drama instead of genuine character moments inconsistencies. A huge and vital plot point that makes up the entire character that is Miguel revolves around quote unquote canon events. These are events that are destined to happen, such as Uncle Ben dying, the close police captain of Spider-Man dying, the spider bite, which actually brings me to my next point. Miguel goes into great length about how he destroyed another universe simply by existing and replacing himself within a universe where he had already died. We see this event start to take place immediately after Miles alters a canon event in an alternate universe. There was next to no lag time between the alteration itself and the beginning of the end. However, no spider bite occurred within universe 42 and yet it's still there earth 42 spider bit miles in earth 1610 and that universe is still there if miles wasn't bitten arguably peter 1610 would still be alive yet at that moment of his death the universe is still there Miles and the other protagonists do everything that we saw them do in Into the Spider-Verse and 16 Ted is it's still there. Not to mention that with this now being canon with the MCU multiverse, can someone please explain to me why the villains that were brought into Earth 1999-99 in No Way Home were stable? and not glitching like we see everyone do in alternate universe in into the spider-verse and across the spider-verse they wreak havoc and you know what the universe is still there remember miguel's entire character in this film is based off his story of him destroying another entire universe simply by existing within it. Everything else that I've just mentioned is fine, somehow. I don't understand. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, in my opinion, is a terrible Spider-Man movie that, to me, disappoints on every level. It is a long, boring, confusing, unfaithful, and uh, ultimately unoriginal film that, as I said, wastes its potential and its characters. It is, in my opinion, a film that does not understand or respect what makes Spider-Man such a beloved and iconic superhero. The best part about this whole thing is that everything I've just said is just my opinion. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just my opinion. It's not a fact. Regardless of whether you agree or disagree with everything I've just said, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Tell me what you think. What's your favorite, what's your least favorite Spider-Man movie and why? I've also got links to my Discord um, and my Twitch channels where I'm doing a lot of this stuff live. Um, as well as Discord, naturally, I just said where I'll be posting um, all the upcoming events. Um, 
Well, most likely could go into, but I won't right now. I'll save that for another video. So, ultimately, regardless of whether you were here for two seconds or two hours, doesn't matter. I appreciate the fact you clicked on the video in the first place. Uh, I really appreciate your insight, your thoughts, your likes, your subscribes, your follows, everything. Um, but regardless of whether you've done any of the previous, thank you for hearing me out.